for everybody, but uh, thanks so much uh, to James and Pete for both coming on uh, to speak to myself all about uh, themselves, music and the band. But uh, first of all, how are the both of you doing? Yeah. Doing very well, thanks. All good, man. All good. Excellent. Well, what I do is I normally start at the very beginning for everybody. So for the, the two of you, where were you both uh, brought up and were you both into music? From a young age. I'll let you go first, James. All right. Yeah. So, I was born in uh, Northampton, East Midlands. Uh, grew up there. I live back there now, actually. Um, and yeah, I sort of, I was into music from a young age. Uh, sort of bands like Deep Purple and Rolling Stones and stuff. Uh, my my parents listened to. So I kind of got got hooked on it that way and then it just evolved from there really and uh, now I listen to, to to all sorts and like taking little bits of all, of all various genres mostly guitar led but <laughs> <laughs> what about yourself Pete? Well um, I was brought up in a household where my older sisters were crazy about music so my music taste is very varied and mixed up because they were like into stuff like Northern Soul and the Beatles and things like that, and um, and and then I guess when I was when I was a lot younger, I, I was like really into like uh, Blondie and Joan Jett. Yeah, I think I think maybe because I had a little crush on them or something, probably. And then <laughs> um, and then and then when I was at school, I was kind of into punk, um, and then. I swapped a Stiff Little Fingers album for Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, and yeah. then there was no looking back. <laughs> that was well, it. That I, was was it. Going, I was going to ask, what age, obviously there's a lot of influence from parents, from older siblings, but what age were the two of you when you started to discover your own musical taste, and what, what were some of the bands that you were discovering? Yeah, I mean... <clears throat> For me, I sort of went in a bit of a bit of a loop. As I said, sort of my parents listened to a lot of classic rock, and then I think the first sort of few bands that I started discovering on my own were bands like Guns N' Roses, which were just that little bit like past their era, um, but still really liked them. And then I kept just discovering when I was sort of like, you know, a uh, young teenager, like 12, 13, 14, started getting into. I started hearing stuff like Metallica and Sabbath, and I got all into the sort of heavier side, and uh, then went all the way down to like, you know, even like death metal and stuff, and got all into that. But these days I sort of mellowed out a bit more again, and um, I still like all that stuff, but I'm quite happily listening to the blues and, and rock and um, yeah. stuff like that. Pete, well, I kind of, I kind of started off, uh, like I said, with Blondie and and Joe Jett, and then I kind of, that kind of, kind of took me in, into like get, getting into like the Ramones, and then I sort of discovered through friends at school ACDC and Motorhead. Yep. And um, and so then you know I was, and then I, I was kind of hooked on on rock, and I, I discovered like like UFO, um, and then Aerosmith, like. Um, but then I went through a bit of a phase, like in some hair metal bands, which I'm totally ashamed of. <laughs> uh, but, you know, but then grunge face. came along, and um, and so um, yeah, um, I think I think I really like I really like Guns N' Roses, um, like James was just saying. But then, as gr as grunge came along, I, I kind of think that was my that was my sort of spiritual music yeah. because all, all, all the, all the, all the, ba all the bands that came through from grunge and, and everything kind of, you know, uh, like harked back to like, um, Sabbath and the Stooges and, and bands like that. And, and, and MC five and, uh, I, 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 it kind of got me hooked a bit. Yeah. So, uh, give myself a laugh and maybe each other as well. Do both of you remember what the first music album was that he's ever bought? Mm-hmm. Yeah, very well. 
Mine's actually not that laughable. To actually give us the truthful one. Yeah, yeah. My, my first album I ever had was uh, Hybrid Theory by Linkin Park. So right. I'd say that's a pretty good one, to be fair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my first album that I actually bought was a, was, was a, an orange vinyl uh, of um, a, a band. It was called The Amazing Darts. And they were like a kind of a a pastiche sort of like rock and roll band in the seventies. That was my that that was my first album that I actually bought with my own money. Do you remember what your your first concert was that you attended by yourself? Because one of the things we've spoke about previously on previous episodes was that it doesn't matter how good your headphones are or the stereo system that you're that you're playing the music from. There's nothing like experiencing live music, especially for the first time. So do you both remember the first concert that you attended by yourself? Yeah, yeah. My first one, um, I can't remember what year it was, but it was uh, an out- open air gig and it was uh, status quo a headline and choir boys were the supporting acts and it was, uh, it was brilliant. I remember some uh, some random some random woman in the crowd. I was only small, and she saw that I was a bit far back, so she literally grabbed me and pulled me to the front and just like lifted me up, and it was amazing. I had such yeah. a good time. Excellent. <laughs> um, I think mine was um, the Stranglers in in Sheffield. I can't remember what year it was, but um, but yeah, I must have been about. 14, pushing 15, maybe. Yep. Something like that. And um, what instruments do both of you play? Well, play is a stretch, but um, I I own guitars, and uh, that is that is my role in the band. <laughs> guitars and backing vocals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I, I started playing drums when I was at school, and I played drums for quite a long time, and then... I started singing, sort of, um, and then tried to play guitar, and that didn't go too well. So then, I just, and then, so then, I just stayed being a singer for ages, and then just had lots of time. So tried to learn a bit of guitar, really, as well. Yeah. What was it that got you? What, what was it that drew you towards the the guitar, James? So you know, there's there's so many different instruments out there. What was it about the guitar? I'll, I'll be honest. I didn't want to play guitar. Um, it's a bit of a funny, funny story, this one. But um, I remember, so I was getting into music and stuff, and I was like, "All right, I want to be, I want to be in a band." Yeah. And uh, I remember I went up to my dad one day. And I was only like nine years old, and um, I was like, "Dad, for, for my birthday this year, I, I really want a drum kit. Can I get a drum kit?" And it's the only time my dad ever laughed in my face and went, no fucking way. And I was just like, what? Why not? And he just went, too big, too loud. But we've got an old, we've got an old guitar in the attic. If you want to play an instrument, we'll dig it out, see if you learn. If you get on with it, we'll, we'll get you an electric. So I was like, yep. I was like, fine. But then every day since that point, uh, when I was a teenager living at home, my mission was, because I was still bitter about it, my mission was to uh, <laughs> make, make sure my amps that I had were louder than any drum kit could ever be. And yeah. I had so much equipment that it would take up more room than a drum kit ever would have done, just to make him regret that decision. <laughs> <laughs> and Pete, what was it that, what was it that um, made you go towards the drums to start with? Um... I'm not really sure, actually. I think it might have been... Um... <laughs> Somebody at school um, that I knew, like who was like a, a couple of years older than me, um, offered to teach me how to play drums. Yep. Um, and so in, in the music class at school or whatever... Um, you know, like my, my sisters both played like piano and and violin really well, and um, I, I went for piano lessons when I was quite young. But I just wasn't interested. I mean, like 
you know, I was only four or five, and I was just like, just not bothered. I mean, I, I wish I would have tried to keep it up, really, but, you know, obviously at that age, I was more interested in getting home to watch the TV or whatever. Um, so when this guy at school said he would um, teach me how to play a proper drum kit, it was quite. It seemed quite exciting. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I didn't know many drummers at the time, you know, and, and all, all my mates either wanted to be guitarists or singers. So yeah. I guess, you know, it kind of slotted into that really. And um, So what about, what about singing for yourself? Because singing's a funny one because whether it be the, the guitar, the drums, the bass, you can get lessons, you, you know, you learn a lot of stuff from just playing in a band, learning from other, other musicians. Uh, nowadays, you can obviously go online and you can... There's a million people on YouTube giving you lessons on how to play whatever song you you want to play. But singing's the weird one because you, you do have to have some talent, but a, a huge part of singing is, is purely confidence and you can't teach someone confidence. They either have it or they don't. What made you want to step in front of the microphone? Because it, it is a difficult thing that a lot of people cannot do. Hmm. Um, I think it was necessity. Um, yeah. At the time, um, like the the last band that I was in, that I kind of, well, not the last band that I was in to play drums, because um, I kind of still do a little bit of that. But um, the band that I was in at the time, um, we we lost our singer, and, and like nobody wanted to step up, um, yep. and we couldn't find anybody for a long time. And I had been kind of doing a little bit of backing vocals or whatever, and um, and I knew this. I knew this other guy that like was, was really interested in playing drums, yeah. and so I basically taught him taught him how to play drums, and he picked it up really really quickly. Yeah. Um, and so then I just kind of stepped onto the mic really, and it kind of went from there. It is amazing. Some sometimes the singer is simply the bravest person to step in front of the microphone. <laughs> well, I mean, you know. I've known a lot of drummers in my time, and a lot of them are, are, are kind of closet singers. I think, <laughs> the that, closet frontmen for sure. Is that the same way? There's a lot of guitarists would like to be drummers. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no one actually wants to be playing the instrument they're doing. <laughs> it's all a lie. <laughs> and, um, well, you know, I mean, like I remember, I remember as well when, like, I remember my dad saying to me, you know. What you're going to be a singer now? And we spent all that we spent all that money on drums and stuff. And I'm like, yeah. And he went, oh, and what? All do you, all you need now is a microphone. I went, no, no, I need a PA. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny though because when you when you think back to when you were first, and no, you know the drums. Not only do they take up a lot of space, they're extremely expensive. They're very loud to even practice with. It's when you start gigging and. You know, everybody's loaded their gear in, set up, and you, the drummer's still taking stuff out of their car and walking there with it. It's just a nightmare. And then you see the singer walk in and he's got the microphone in his back pocket. Like, no. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, it, it's it's strange. I don't, like, like nobody seems to want to help the drummer set up. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> why is that? But, you know, I mean... For playing drums for so long, I've like I've 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 already earned my I've already earned my stripes by um, setting up setting up my own kit for long enough. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> if we fast forward to the Black Spider, how did the band come about? I'm saying if you fast forward all these years playing the Black Spiders, how did the band come about? How did it start? Um, initially, um, myself and Ozzy, the original guitarist, um, had known each other for quite a long time, been in different bands, and we just, like, we played a, um, we got together with a few people, including um, Irwin, the bass player, um, to learn some covers for um, a friend's birthday party, like a surprise birthday party that his missus was um, setting up. And um, and so we kind of learnt loads of the, like we learnt loads of different songs that were like kind of his favourite tunes and, you know, a lot of them were our favourite tunes as well. <clears throat> and I think when we'd done that, 
we kind of just thought, well, why aren't we making, why aren't we in a band that's making music like this? Because like this is the music that we love as well, you know, and it's so much fun. And you know, we've been in bands before where, it, you know, it's all, all all original music or whatever, but but not not all those like classic um, influences that we had that we that we sort of learned yeah. for, for for our mates surprise do um, and it kind of just went from there really I mean e- even after we'd done that gig we um, like we decided we'd play another show <laughs> uh, doing you know doing the same songs um, uh, s- somewhere else and, and, and it went down really really well so we just thought you know we should try and do something and it just that- it just just went from there really that was the starting point. Uh, James, who yeah. came up? Who came up with the band name? I don't know. I wasn't around back then, but um, I'm pretty sure it was it was your idea, wasn't it, Pete? Because it came off your last name. Well, yeah. I mean, see, so my nickname for for for, for so long has been called Spider and um, Irwin. Um, I've known him when he was in his when he was in his former band, and him and his bandmates used to call me the Black Spider, and I'm not really sure why. <laughs> um, I don't think he can even remember. It, it could have been because I, I had a quite dark sense of humour. I'm not really sure. Um, I'd like to think it was something as simple as that. And so basically, um, yeah, we just like, so we called the uh, originally like so so the so the band that we did the cover. Right. Did, sorry, did you did you have other band names, or other alternatives, or was it just that? that no, thing? that was it. That was the that was the first and only one. And you know, we kind of thought, oh, you know, I'm sure there's not another band called that. So we kind of just went with it, really. It, it's funny though because see the many bands that I've either known or been in over the years, and they can split up before the first gig is ever played because people fall out <laughs> over what what the band's meant to be called, and sometimes <laughs> there's there's almost like there's too much thought goes into it, and then some some of the best band names they, they don't mean anything. They just that just is exactly, yeah. Well, yeah. you know, I mean, previously this band has, has done a lot of overthinking. <laughs> it doesn't really it doesn't really get you anywhere, to be honest. Um, you know, so talking and, about and, talking and luckily, about the band. go on. Sorry, sorry, I was going to say talking about the band then. How do you, as a band, go about writing songs? So, for example, will James come in with a, a rough song idea, a verse, chorus, or do you meet up as a band with not, nothing and simply jam and come up with ideas? Is it a bit of both? How do you write, write songs as a band? I mean, it comes about in various forms, really. Uh, like, every member of the band will um, pitch in ideas for songs Um, and I mean these days in the world of digital it's great because we we can all record like stuff at home and then we basically pop it into like a new songs ideas folder on our our shared Google Drive (laughs) it's not the most rock and roll thing but we can pick like good ideas from that and then flesh it out in the rehearsal room and bounce ideas back and forth um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of who does it, that's a that's a mixed bag, really. It's right, so uh, any, anyone's open to submit a song. Every, everyone's con- contributing musical musically, and I'm, I'm guessing it's the best ideas are the ones that win that, that Correct. form a song. What, yeah. what about what about lyrics? Is that uh, one <laughs> coming up with it? That's that's just down to me, yeah. Right, and uh, are you just? Is it because you're the singer? Are you quite happy having that task to yourself, or are you open to others contributing if, if they come up with a great idea? Uh, I am, yes, but that's not really ever happened in the history of Black Spiders. To be fair, um, you know, like James is saying, um, nowadays, like, it, like, like since we got back together, um, you know, after COVID. Uh, it seemed it seemed the easiest way to do things was was to kind of like um, put ideas together remotely and then and then take it from there before we take anything to the studio. 
Whereas previously, when we first started, we'd like be thrashing ideas out in the rehearsal room until the song was almost dead. <laughs> and, and, you know, like sometimes that was good, but I think it, it creates, it, it created a, a, a sort of, um, a, a, a bit of a bit of jaded feeling towards songwriting, especially when we did the second album. Um, it, it was it was quite it was quite strange, you know, because everybody at, at that time kind of had like were, were pulling in different directions right. with the, like with the songs. So people would be bringing songs in, and they they they'd particularly want their song in or whatever, and blah blah blah. But now it's kind of like you know we're sort of like right, let's get some ideas in. So James will maybe put up a, a guitar riff line and then I'll, you know, if, if I get some singing for it, then we'll start working on that as a song. We'll add some drums to it, get Owen to add some bass to it and yeah. then, you know, take it from there, you know, or I'll have like a bit of a riff idea with maybe a bit of a melody line and send it to James and then James will put some, you know, proper guitar in on it. <laughs> James, if, if you're coming up with... Let's say you come up with a, a couple of guitar riffs and you go, this, this, you know, mm -hmm. this could be a verse, this could be a chorus. Do you also have a vocal melody in mind that could go with um, it? No, no. The only the only thing that I ever have in my mind that can go with it is guitar solos. <laughs> guitar solos. <laughs> guitar solos. <laughs> if it was up to me, the whole song would just be back in track in a guitar solo. So, uh... but James, what is... <laughs> You were an in instrumental band. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, I would never like to listen to it, but that's what I want to play. <laughs> yeah, so you're, you're obviously all contributing uh, t to write the songs, you know, to make the songs as good as possible. How do you record as a band? And what I mean by that is, do you start with the drums and layer everything on top of it, or do you record the rhythm section live and do overdubs? How? What, what's comfortable for yourselves? Well, we kind of do the layering, uh, really. I mean, um, we've tried doing the live thing before, and it, it's just not the same. Um, and so we've got a great producer, engineer, who will, you know, get the best out of each of us, but... I think he, I think he kind of does that better when it's when when things are done separately. Um, but but you know the, like the rest of us are there for encouragement or whatever. But um, but, but I think usually um, when Matt Ellis, who's 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 been our engineer producer from from the from the beginning, um, he. He'll try and get them all set up for when the bass is going to be put on. So like we try and do everything if, if like we, what we usually do is we go in and do like three songs at a time. Okay. And so, you know, a day will be spent doing the drums and then a little bit of a day will be spent sorting out the drums and, and, and doing any editing and, or any, um, any different arrangements that, that, that might need to, to be done at the last minute before the bass, and then the bass will go in, and then that'll be done in a day, and then the guitars will be done in a couple of days, probably, and then the vocals go on, and then we think about backing vocals and percussion and stuff like that. How, how important is the producer? Because I think that sometimes they're a bit of an unsung hero. Um, the, the, you know, they're the, the extra member of the band that's overlooked, but how important is the producer when it comes to recording? and helping with the songwriting? Um, with regards to songwriting, he he doesn't actually... I mean, he'll, he he might chip in now and again and sort of say, oh, I think this song needs a bit of this or this night, this needs that. And, it, it, and, it, and he's, he's usually quite helpful when it comes to if we've got some backing vocal ideas, he'll sort of say, oh, yeah, that's really good, and how about trying this as well? Um, but, but when it comes to the actual songwriting part of things... He's usually just the person that likes to um, arrange it a little bit. You know, if if, if he if he thinks he, he, if he's got a better arrangement in mind, he'll try and arrange it, it, it like a little bit differently, and then he'll play it back to us and see what we think. Right. You know, like this is kind of before the main vocals 
go down or whatever he'll, he'll sort of say right I've, I've had this idea for this and it, and i think it's really good and it really you know it it, it sort of um cuts to the chase really yeah another thing obviously with recording you know once you've finished your songs once the songs are all mixed and mastered the other thing is is artwork that goes along with the new album the new songs now obviously i, I don't know what age you guys are but when i was younger you know, start to show your age. You know, if you go to a music shop when they still existed, you could flip through the CDs, and there would be times where you could buy a CD, an album, simply based on the look of it, having never heard it. And the way that music yeah. is at, purchased nowadays, it's done via streaming, via downloads. Is artwork still important? Do you think? Yeah, with that. As well, in a way, you know, um, and for and, and for us, it's been part of our, I guess, what people now call brand. Um, so you know, we've had we've we've had certain, like Ozzy, the uh, old guitarist, used to do like he he kind of did the artwork for the last um, four albums. Um, you know. Uh, and, and and some of those some of those were like you know when we've been all all sat around discussing how the artwork should be and he kind of you know like say for, like for the first album and the and the second uh, maybe the, yeah for the first and second album I kind of wrote him like a little story and said try and base some artwork on this all right okay and he and he kind of did that and then for the second album like for the for the for the third album and the fourth album we kind of went with a with we wanted to be like we wanted to change it up a little bit and kind of get a bit more, be a bit more direct, right? And I think, I think the next album will be will be different, will be different again. Yeah, um, yeah. Certainly because you know, obviously now James is lead guitarist, and um, it's it's um, it's a, it's almost like a new start. In a way, you know, it's like a, yeah. it's like a, it's like another new start because you know, Ozzy, Ozzy played such a big part in the in the band previously, um, and then you know, so when he like when when he left in in um, at Christmas, it kind of, like like Christmas the year before last, um, it kind of uh, you know left a big hole to fill. But James has um, you know stepped up to the mark. Yeah. And did, did, did both of you enjoy? Recording, or is it simply something that has to be done to perform, perform them live? I mean, well, I mean, I think sorry, the no, it's okay, James. You go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I, I personally love recording. For me, it's um, it's the most creative part of being in a band, um, and you know when you're you can go in the studio with a song and it might change so drastically while you're in there. So even though you think like writing a song is really creative, actually the recording process is really creative in itself. Yeah. Um, and you get so many ideas bouncing around. And it's great having um, a non-Black Spiders member in the studio. So obviously, like Pete mentioned, Matt's, Matt's our producer. And it's just so great having like an outside perspective and opinion on stuff. Um, so yeah, no, I really like it. I suppose it's that thing as well. When you're in the studio, it's your opportunity to to try things. You know, it might it might not always work, but you might come across something that's just, you know, you didn't expect it, but you know, it sounds amazing. Let's keep it. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I mean, I think we've always tried to keep um, the recording and the live and the live sound. You know. Uh, well, not 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 try to keep it as different as possible. But like when you're in the studio, you know, why not try things that you might not ever do live? It's like you know, if you've got ideas for doing something that sounds great, then you know, then you should go ahead and try and do that. Really, and like James said, it is like a it's 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 another, it's another creative part of the band. So you know, you've got originally you've got the song idea. And then when it becomes a song, and then when you get into the studio and you start recording that song, you know it can it can kind of go from 
what you might think is just an album track to like, you know, uh, the possibility of, you know, whatever used to be classed as a single or, or whatever, you know, because it's a standout track. Um, and then, and then when you do that live, that in itself again is another creative process because you, you know, you, you're recreating that song that, that you've recorded in the studio. Do you prefer, if you had to pick one, do you prefer recording, writing songs and recording, or do you prefer performing live? Hmm. Well, that's, uh, I do like recording, but the actual art of playing the song is is a better buzz, I think. Yeah. Because, you know, obviously when you're writing the song, like you're writing those songs because you want to play them live as a band to hopefully an audience. And, and, and that's where you're getting your kicks from, you know. So the recording... The recording process is just it's a kind it's kind of something that's kind of come along because it's a way of helping to promote the band and let you know get people to 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 know the songs before they come to the gig because obviously once they come to the gig if they've heard the songs um they're already they already have that song in their mind yeah. so if you play that song as well as you've recorded it of what they think it is in their mind because it's live it's it's more exciting yeah Do you know what i mean it's like it, it could seem more exciting and i think you know and with it with doing a gig like not one gig can be the same so that's quite exciting as well because you know you never know what's going to happen yeah. you know you... We all, like we always try and do different songs at, at different gigs as well because you know it, it kind of keeps it a bit more exciting for us as well have you been surprised by any of your songs um, and what I mean by that is when you're in the studio when you're writing you, you hear the songs over and over and over and in your mind you're probably thinking this song's going to go down great in front of an audience but it might be that once you step out on stage it might be another song completely that, that's the favourite that you weren't expecting um, yeah I mean I guess that, like the thing is as well like is is, is this there's quite a few songs that we have probably never played live that are on the albums. Um, maybe not on the first couple of albums, but on, on the on the recent few albums, there's definitely a few songs that we probably never played live because obviously when you've got a set list, you need to try and mix it up a bit and get something from everything. Um, but yeah, you know, sometimes you kind of think that a song might be like, sound killer on on record and everything and you're thinking oh you know this is going to go down really well live and then you know we got hit with a bit of reality um actually by our producer he sort of said yeah that song doesn't do he said that song doesn't work live in my opinion i think i think it makes it go flat but but one of the other songs that we played that we just kind of thought was like a two minute two minute sort of fun song he was like going that's definitely a, a really good song you should try and open with that because people people you can see people's reaction to it is a lot you know and he's, he sees that from from being out in the audience when he's watching people as well so you know um i guess from our point of view is yeah you know the, the, there's always been songs that have kind of sometimes we think they're going to be you know people are going to embrace them and and whatever and and, and it's other songs that that people like, but everybody's different, you know. I mean, we have so many, so many different comments about different songs from from people. It's obviously, you know, down to what people's people's taste is as well. In a way, it's almost like you're sometimes too close to it. That you yes, need, exactly. Need yeah, someone who's a few steps back, and as you see, every every single person is different. So if you get ten people to come in and listen to your album, they might all pick ten different songs that's a favourite. Exactly. Like just the way it goes, but uh, Pete, we've obviously um, been quite serious up to this point. Lots of technical questions, and <laughs> right. so we're going to add, we're going to end things on some fun questions for you. Okay. Uh, James's um, battery died on his phone, so it's just it's just the two of us. Oh, okay. Okay. So, 
Imagine that you could uh, step back in time. Imagine you could go anywhere in the world. What's the one concert or gig that you wish that you could have attended, that you could have been in the audience to witness? Oh, wow. Well, wow, that's a good one. Um, There's so many. There is so many, yeah. I mean, um, there's two that spring to mind, but... I, I, What's the two? Well, I mean, I think one of them was probably, you know, when Aerosmith were at their height in the 70s. Um, yeah. I've seen some classic photos and shots from that when they've, you know, when, when like, I guess when they were on the tour when they did their live album um, and... Um, yeah, seeing them seeing them in the hometown in Boston might have been really good, but I, I would have really loved to see um, Chris Cornell when he recorded his live album. I think that would have been quite amazing. Yeah, I mean, I, I always liked um, you were talking about grunge earlier. I, I always liked Pearl Jam, but those first two albums would have just been. Um, outstanding. See, back when they were still sort of hungry for it, before they, before they, they became mainstream and, and hit the big time, yeah. they were just, for a couple of years there, they were unstoppable. And uh, it would have been cool just to sort of maybe like 1992, 93, that kind of time. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, obviously, you play the drums, you, you sing. Is there a musical instrument you wish that you could play that <laughs> you would play? Um, well, I tried to I tried to learn myself a little bit of piano during COVID when we were all locked away, um, and I kind of picked a few bits up. But um, I, I, yeah, I think piano is the one I wish I could play properly and more of. All right, okay. that, that's quite a common piano and saxophone seem to be the two most common. Ah. Okay. Common answers. So there you go. So next question. Imagine it's four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> You've got a dead body in the boot of your car. Yeah. And you need to help to dispose of it. Which of the band members do you think is the best person to rely on that is going to help you dispose of a dead body at four in the morning, no questions asked? Wyatt. <laughs> <laughs> Here I ask why. Um, or is it simply he would be the first one to answer his phone at four in the morning? Oh, maybe. Yeah, no. I mean, I think. Yeah, I think. I think he would just like not not want to know what 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 happened, and and would just be like, okay, let's just get rid of this. <laughs> Poor Wyatt. Well, okay. And last <laughs> week. Uh, Mount Rushmore, who is the four bands or musicians for yourself are perfection? Ooh. Okay. Um, Chris Cornell. Yep. Uh, Steven Tyler. Yeah. Um, Michael Schenker. Yep. And one more. God, come on. Um, Johnny Cash. Wow. There you go. I love that question as well because it doesn't matter how many people uh, I speak to. It doesn't matter how many people. It doesn't matter what what type of music they're playing, what their background is. You get four different answers every single time to that question it's a great question and it, is. it just shows you how good music is that you know everybody's so influenced by different things and it, it's cool just to hear but but pete thank you so much for coming on and obviously james i know he was on earlier and uh, his phone died but thank you for taking the time to speak to myself anytime uh, we are relatively early on still in 2024 so before you go what is the plans for the rest of the year with the band 
Uh, well, we've got a couple of festivals. Um, we're doing one called Just Push Play, which is kind of going to be in sort of like uh, it's kind of like Middle England. Um, and then we've got um, a, a warm a warm down show um, after, just straight after that when we play in a really small venue in Hull called the Adelphi because yep. they're celebrating forty years of, of having bands on, and we want you know we want to we want to help um, want to help little venues kind of you know keep going. Um, and then we've got um, we're playing Monster Fest up in, I think it's up near Inverness, right? Okay. Um, in August, and we are then playing a gig in Glasgow at the Stereo, um, the day after that on the way back. Wait, wait, the Glasgow gig. What date is that? Um, let me just figure that out. I think it's. Uh, let me see. It's. Um, oh, I think it's in. I think it's in. August. Let's have a look. Hold on. Sorry, I'm I'm I'm, I'm not prepared. I'm not very well prepared, am I? <laughs> uh, um, so I think like we've just got two festivals, and we've got those two gigs, and then we're doing a couple of Patreon gigs, which are our, which are our fan club shows. Um, so we're, yeah, so we're doing those as well. Um, let's have a look. Uh, is it August? But anybody, anyone that's that's watching, that wants to, to come along to one of your gigs, they go into your social media, they go into your website, they'll get the dates, links to the oh, yeah, sure, sure. information that they require. Our, um, yeah, our, um, like, right, so so there's a, like the the gig in Hull and the one at um, the one at the Just Push Play Festival. They're happening at the at the beginning of August, the third and fourth of August, which is a Saturday and a Sunday. And then we've got the Monster Fest is on Saturday the 9th of November. And then right. Glasgow is the 10th of November. That's cool. I'll see if I can pop along to the Glasgow one. Yeah. And so like, apart from that, we're just hopefully going to try and see if we can get into the studio to start <clears throat> recording our fifth studio album. Sure. Because we'd like to have that out by next year if we can. Well, Pete, I wish you all the success. I'll keep a wee... Um... I use on social media, but uh, I wish yourself and the guys all the success. Thanks, mate. And, uh, I look forward to catching up with you at a gig. But uh, until next time, thank you for coming on, and I'll speak to you later on. Cheers, mate. Take care, Ian. Yeah. Yeah.